So it's time for us to go ahead and talk about the Medic Quest 2 or the Oculus Quest 2, whatever you want to call it, and see how it pretty much holds up in 2023. Now, the way, I mean, there's been so much development and so much movement in the metaverse, you know, space. I really don't think it's, I'm not, I, I, I don't really know how I feel about it, to be honest. I've played a few games on my, you know, MetaQuest, Oculus headset, whatever you want to call it. The main things to keep in mind, though, is that for one, uh, Meta as a company has been investing and spending so much money into the metaverse that it's been tanking their stock. But I think it's been improving the experience of the MetaQuest, you know, people who own the MetaQuest. So that's kind of an interesting parallax there. But the other thing to keep in mind is that late last year, just like two months ago, we kind of got a successor to the MetaQuest. It wasn't a direct successor. It's not the MetaQuest 3, but it was the MetaQuest Pro, which is more of like a professional, I think more tailored to corporate or business type of situations. And I think that is if Meta, you know, as a company could have just made the MetaQuest Pro somewhat, you know, of a MetaQuest 3, like if the MetaQuest 3 is anything like the MetaQuest Pro, I think there could be a lot of people who will maneuver and migrate over and start using things within the metaverse probably a little bit more. Another big thing is that Apple is probably a, like pretty much very soon going to be making their own meta headset as well, their own VR, AR headset. And I think that's going to be very interesting once they actually get that going too. I think it's going to be a very, very interesting experience and in how much competition is going to be in the space. So if you want to pick up one of these headsets, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of this headset, not much has changed, which is pretty much expected. It is still a pretty beefy and big headset. So you have that little like exterior, which does protrude quite a bit, you know, outside. You have the strap up top and you have the little two areas on the front that you can pretty much put your eyes through and you can, you can peek through and you can pretty much just take a glance of everything around you and everything. And I think overall, you know, it's actually a pretty good, you know, headset. It doesn't feel cheap at all. When I actually ended up getting the MetaQuest Pro, that actually felt fairly premium, but it wasn't like I would have used that over the, you know, MetaQuest 2 just because of the premiumness. It was the lightweightness and the, you know, way the weight kind of balanced a little bit more. With the MetaQuest 2, when you're actually using that day to day, you know, and you can feel that thing on your head. So I think the technology still needs to get better to where this thing needs to get slimmer. If it's half its size, it doesn't have to be like just glasses, but even if they get like half the size of this thing, that would be monumental. I feel like the main thing stopping me from using this thing every day is the size, to be honest. You know, once it gets a little bit better, I think that would be amazing. Now, the other thing is the charging capability and everything. I still think this thing charges fine. You know, for the last year I've been using it, I haven't had too many issues in that perspective. So I do want to state some of the issues I have had. For one, the actual module, like the actual headset wouldn't turn on randomly. So that I had to kind of deal with and I just had to keep I actually had to let it die all the way through, charge it back up, and then it ended up actually, you know, charging up. Luckily, I don't have to use this thing every day, but if you were using this thing every day, you would have, like, had to stop using this thing for a few days, and then at least that's what fixed it for me. Maybe it's another thing, I don't know. But also, another weird thing is that the controllers sometimes wouldn't actually activate and connect with my headset. To keep in mind, I don't have any other headset besides the MetaQuest Pro that I bought, like, two months ago. But since then, even before that, I've had issues where the remote, con where the actual controllers wouldn't, you know, sync up properly. Totally okay. Things like that happen with pretty much any console, any gaming console, PCs, Macs, you name it. So I'm not really too, you know, so I definitely have experience with that. But that was another small thing that I had an issue with. Luckily, though, it seems like last year there wasn't any crazy major defect that happened with any of these headsets. But then another big thing that, you know, Meta ended up doing is changing the name from the Oculus headset to the MetaQuest headset. So that either happened in late 2021 or earlier 2022. And that was another thing where when I looked at this, you know, specific headset, I don't really know why Meta did that. I think they had something going there with the Oculus headset. I think that was a tremendous name. All of their branding, all of their brand awareness, everything, even the YouTube videos that people have made before talking about the Oculus headset, including videos I made last year, pretty much, I mean, people are still going to be searching things up for the Oculus headset. So the main reason why they ended up switching it, I think, is because of the metaverse, the meta, you know, the way that name is trending right now. So it kind of makes sense why they did it. I wish they didn't. I think, you know, Oculus was a really good name, but regardless, 
VR, there's just not much you can do. Now, this specific headset, like I mentioned, it's a VR and AR headset, meaning you can go through and play all these, you know, AR and VR games. There were several new games and several new things that have been, you know, kind of going on last year. And especially in the development community behind this headset, they made massive progress because I think a lot of people have been able to unlock a lot more things within this headset, which is actually really nice. So when I use something like this MetaQuest headset, I'm actually kind of happy with the experience and the performance that I've been getting. Although I don't game on this thing regularly, there's been a lot of development with other applications, including all the web browsers within this headset. And I do think the power within this headset is actually pretty good. You know, it does have six gigabytes of RAM inside of it, and that is quite a bit of RAM to have on this type of headset. There's been lots of other machines that have came out, even phones still that don't even have six gigabytes of RAM. So for this thing to have that, and this thing is a few years old now, it's actually kind of nice. They also have that Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 platform chipset, whatever you want to call it, on this specific headset too. And I know these MetaQuest Pro has a newer chipset inside, but when I use that MetaQuest Pro and when I use this headset, I can definitely see some, I can see massive improvements with that headset. But it's not really just in the performance side, like I mentioned earlier. It's definitely with the, you know, size of the headset and the weight balance. I think if there's anything that pretty much Meta can learn from this specific headset beyond all the learnings they've done before is to just go through and pretty much make this thing as lightweight as possible. Now, another interesting thing that happened last year, which I was not expecting, I don't think I've ever seen a company do this before, is that they actually went ahead and increased the price tag of this specific headset. So it seems like, at least from what I was seeing, there was so much of a demand of this specific headset. And I think more so Meta was just bleeding so much money into, you know, the metaverse, you know, experience that they actually ended up increasing the price tag of the Meta Quest headset, which is actually, honestly, it's kind of unheard of. I don't know too many de electronic devices that people, you know, end up buying so much that the, the manufacturer actually ends up increasing the price. I feel like if anybody can do this, it is within the gaming space. And I wouldn't really consider the MetaQuest headset like a gaming console by any means. But I mean, even on their you know main sales page, it showcases and demonstrates a lot of games that you can play and everything like that. So personally, that's something else that's very interesting. And honestly, that's kind of it. There's not really anything that's changed, you know, that I haven't already mentioned from 2021 to 2022. But 2022 to 2023, there have been lots of changes. So hopefully this video kind of broke it down for you how it kind of holds up now. I think this specific headset is still completely worth it. I think it still has a lot of power within it. And honestly, the technology is really good. I think the technology itself is really, really fascinating. The only issue and the main issue I have at hand is this, this headset is very, very large and it's uncomfortable to use for long periods of time. I think if Meta can do a few things for the next generation, I hope they decrease the weight of this specific headset. I hope they decrease the size of it, at least like in terms of how much it sticks out of your face. And I hope with the controllers, they can actually go through and pretty much make rechargeable controllers on this headset as well. I think that would be something that would be really, really awesome. I think with the MetaQuest Pro, they did a great job, but I do think that is way overpriced. And I think they do need like a $400 to $300 like consumer head, you know, headset rather than a professional corporate headset. That way more people can get their hands on it. So I think they're doing great things. I just hope they, you know, spend their money wisely and I hope they can go ahead and make the next generation of this headset much lighter and hopefully it doesn't, you know, take up as much space on your face. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.